Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There is one thing that is common to Christians. They are quick to accept the outcome of something. When something happens, they say it is from God and they leave it. Is it really from God? Did God say he cannot solve those problems? Has God told you to accept that defeat? Has God told you to allow that storm to kill you? Christians are quick to underrate God because of the magnitude of their problems. We need someone to tell us that it doesn't matter the nature of the problem. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter the number of people who have tried to help you solve your problems. God is bigger. God created heaven and earth. He created you. He created what people cannot explain. How can you say there are things God cannot handle? This is a message for us to wake up and start seeing God in another dimension. This message is for us to put our hope in God and never look elsewhere. Who are you trusting? Who are you running to for help? Who have you made your salvation in times of trouble? Psalm 20 verses 7 and 8. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Who are you trusting to win your battles for you? Who are you depending on? A preacher once said, before you go to the phone, go to the throne. No one is stopping you from seeking help from people. We should never keep certain problems or challenges to ourselves. We must tell people who we trust. But before we do that, there is a need to go to God. God shouldn't be the last to know about your problems. He is your Father. He knows you more than anyone on earth. He created you. He sees you. He sees the tears in your eyes that no one can see. Why should you think he will not help you? Why should you think he is not able to help you? The psalmist was certain of the only place he could get help from. He said in Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2, I will lift mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. They must have looked everywhere in search of help. The truth is that until you call to God to step into that situation in your life, nothing will happen. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27, God was saying if he could make the heavens and earth and human beings, what should be hard for him to do? God is talking to you who have chosen to limit him in your heart. Don't limit God in your heart. God has promised you many things. He said he would be with you. He said he has good plans for you. God said he will keep you safe. All the problems you are facing are nothing before the Lord. Don't let your heart be troubled. There are many stories of people who have been faced with the challenges of life. In this life, the truth we should know, or we should have known, is that life is full of challenges. No one will escape them. If anyone tells you that the journey of life is smooth, you can be sure it is a lie. We have seen many things. We have faced many things. We feel down, and we feel like giving up. It is a feeling that comes when we are faced with overwhelming challenges. Should we give up? Should we look and allow these unpleasant situations to knock us down? What should we be thinking of any time we face challenges? I could have suggested prayer first. We can't rule out the fact that prayer is one of the solutions to the problems we face or challenges that come our way. But even prayer must have a basis. What is the prayer standing? What is the reference point of the prayer? Prayer is powerful if it is prayed with faith and also one important thing, the promise of God. What we should use to pray for it to be more effective is not just faith, but also the promise of God. Now, whatever we face in this life, whatever the situation may be, the promises of God are always greater than everything. Why are the promises of God greater than all our challenges? This is one of the questions that may pop up in your heart. Why should promises be more powerful than challenges? The first thing that we should know is that these promises are not ordinary. They are promises that are standing because of the power backing them up. These promises are powerful because they are directly from the Lord. One thing we know about God is that he honors his word. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of the Lord must be fulfilled. These promises have been there. They are the word of God that is living. They are alive and not dead. They are powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword 
piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When challenges show and we use these words that are alive and powerful to fight by applying faith, kills the challenges. There is a difference between a fact and a prediction. A fact means it has been tested and approved. It will do exactly what it should do, but prediction may not be accurate. Promises of God are facts. They are what they are and will work for any situation. Before going further, what is the promise itself? We have been hearing this word many times from different people, but what does it mean? The promise could mean a pledge. It also means an assurance of something. Generally, we can describe a promise to be an act of giving an assurance that one will do something for someone or giving an assurance that something will happen. If we are talking of God's promises, what does that mean? It simply means God giving assurance that he will do something for us or something will happen to us. What we should desire in this life is the fulfillment of God's promises in our lives. Whatever the situation is, whatever the challenges are, what word do you need from God? What are the promises you should hold on to and never let go of? 1. God will never leave you. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Sometimes we pray, but it looks like the prayers are not effective. The reason we feel this way is because of the overwhelming challenges. They make us believe that God has neglected us. They make us believe that we cannot be helped anymore. What God said in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 is different from our thoughts. He said he will never leave us. This means that even if we face the storms of life, if we face the fire, if the gates of hell come knocking on your door, if every demon of hell attacks you, if the whole world rejects you, if your family leaves, God will never leave you. Joshua was young when he became a leader of the Israelites. He must have been afraid at first, but God promised him that he would never leave him alone. God encouraged him in Joshua 1 verse 9. The day the earth stood still. Joshua 10 verses 12 to 14. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day that the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Aijalah. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Yasher? The sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. The Israelites were at the war front, and time was no longer on their side, and it was getting dark. All Joshua did was cry out to God, and God heard him. Not only did the sun and moon stop so that Joshua and his army could continue fighting, but God also caused a mighty tempest to attack the Canaanites with rain and hailstones. God did more than Joshua asked. This affirms what Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, God will always do much more than we can picture in our hearts. Joshua 10 verse 8, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua stood on God's promise and refused to give up even when it looked like they would not have the victory God promised them. Time was no longer on their side, but he held God by his word and he dared to believe the impossible. Now, let's look at your life. What impossible situation are you going through? You see, time was running out for Joshua. So what do you do when time is against you? What do you do when the clock keeps moving and you are not where you thought you would be in life? What do you do when the years and months keep flying by and the wrinkles on your face begin to form? I want to remind you to never lose hope. Have faith in God, even in the face of the toughest challenge. Keep your faith alive. You see, God can give you the ability to accomplish something that normally may take up to 30 years to accomplish in just one day. He is not limited, but there are two things you need to do. Firstly, have faith in God, and second, don't give up. Hold tightly onto His promises. God deliberately assures us with his word ahead of time so that we have something to hold on to when it does seem too tough. There is no situation too tough for the Father to handle. As long as we call to him, he hears us 
and answers us. The problem with many of us is that we fail to call on God in our difficult times. If you are going through a difficult season in your life, don't get desperate, don't get distressed, don't forget God. You have God who is in heaven, who has ears open to hear your prayer. Instead of praying, we resolve to complaining and talking to people who have no help to offer us. God moved because Joshua called out to him. If you want God to move for your sake, let him hear your voice. Cry out to him. All the help you need lies in him alone. The devil will try to keep your lips sealed. Break free. Speak to your father. Our prayers move God to action. Pray about that situation. Though many of us pray, we don't believe. Somewhere in the corridors of our hearts, we doubt if God can really do something about the situation. Joshua had never heard of such a feat from God, but he believed in God's ability to do anything. His mind was opened up to the possibilities. He was confident that God would show up for him in any way. God has all the power and resources to do anything. He cannot be restricted by anyone because nobody gave him his power. God can move heaven and earth for your sake. He can defy the laws of science and nature for your sake. He can do anything for you. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. God specializes in making a way where there seems to be no way. He parted the Red Sea. Who could have thought? He made water flow out of a rock. He sent ravens, the stingiest of all birds, to take food to Elijah. Right from the beginning of time up until this day, God has been specializing in the impossible.